What are the components of a food supply chain? In the graphic that you see, you see that there are different components and actors in a food supply chain in the upstream and in the downstream. In the upstream, you'll see that there's something called suppliers of farm inputs. And those suppliers of farm inputs produce or provide chemicals like pesticides and fertilizer, machinery um, to dig up crops, um, to clear land, and financing some capital for, um, for farmers. Second on that supply chain are the farmers themselves. Farmers, fishers, ranchers are such an important part of the food supply chain. And they turn their labor and combine it with the land or the waters that they work um, alongside the inputs from farm inputs, machinery and chemicals and produce raw agricultural commodities. Now, the second, the third part of a food supply chain is something called processors. And processors are more complex, but easily we could divide them into two things. One are first line handlers, and those first line handlers aggregate, collect raw commodities, raw agricultural commodities. They store them um, and make sure that they can be processed, like those are processors that wrap fruit or put fruits in bags or mill flour so that they can go to a bakery next. Um, they provide sort of initial processing of those raw agricultural commodities. The second sort of processing plant is a manufacturing factory or a processing factory where, you know, um, raw agricultural commodities are packed like meat, that's where meat is packed, or bakeries, that's where sort of the milled flour um, becomes bread, or how, you know, raw materials get packaged into um, more finished products like cookies or cakes or, you know, um, kind of different kinds of raw um, materials get packaged into a processed food. Now, after that, we see that there are ways in which those processed foods go into a wholesaler. Something like Costco or before Costco was available to everyone, there are wholesalers that um, sell big batches of those products to retail supermarkets. And um, the retail supermarkets then sell it to consumers, right? Um, those wholesalers also sell it to maybe a food service provider like a restaurant or um, school kitchens or something that, you know, feeds a, a more, more people than just one person, right? And so the final person, the final actors in the sort of downstream is you see that the, they're consumers and the food service providers. So all in all, that is a sort of food supply chain that we are looking at in this class. Some parts of a food supply chain become global. As we saw in our study of the avocados and how it became a global fruit, we see that Mexico is the third largest country in the world that produces fruit. Most, mostly that sort of goes in the upstream of a food supply chain, right? The global food supply chain um, draws raw agricultural commodities like avocados, bananas, oranges from a place outside of the U.S. Right there, the upstream is a global. That global upstream often um, is required because countries like the United States are scarce in terms of labor of folks who want to work in the upstream, whether it's farming, fishing, ranching, or in the processing and manufacturing industries. And so part of the food supply chain that you might be following in your projects um, begins in the global, in a global realm already, because the U.S. doesn't have that type of labor and resources here in the United States within our borders. While it's hard to figure out which parts of your food supply chain from 
the farmer growing the food, the processing, the packaging, the wholesaler, um, or the transport to the supermarket if it comes from outside of the United States. A big part of what governs the global food supply chain are economics and global economics that include the North American Free Trade Agreement, for example, that really controls what types of products can come in and out of the United States, Mexico, and even Canada. There are lots of different trade agreements that govern these kinds of rules, and our global food supply chain is really dependent on those kinds of globalized economics and political moves. So as you're thinking through your project assignment this week, which is to follow your food, think about where your food product comes from and how to follow it. Until next time.